In less than a decade, um, ING Diva managed to become the third largest retail bank in Germany. And we did this without having a single branch. Some people call that a disruptive business model. You can call it like that. We have to be careful, but we, we call it like that. And we seem to be well on our way. Over internet and now mobile, and in two years, very likely something else that we cannot possibly imagine today, yet another wave is going to materially influence the way we deal with our customers. It's not an evolution, it's not a trend. It's a revolution that I believe has a magnitude that the financial services industry has not seen before and will change things so fundamentally, it will actually, it has the chance of actually dwarfing the effects of the financial crisis that we have behind us when you look at the competitive landscape. Many of the household names that we see today are at risk. They may not be able to keep up with the material and dramatic changes that are happening in that revolution and run the risk of becoming that second Nokia or Kodak, those household names that were proud at the time and very large and dominating their markets. Why is that? Because the changes that are taking place are both happening at a speed that we have never seen before and are at the second hand, in the second instance also profoundly impacting the way that we are operating. We're not just building new fronts. We have to rebuild the operations that we know today all the way down into the, into the catacombs of our offices and our operations in order to deliver what customers are expecting from us. This is going to be extremely visible on the retail side, but it's also happening on the commercial banking side. In the retail side, people feel a little bit familiar with it because everybody who is not dealing with a bank in a professional environment has, generally speaking, a bank account. Unfortunately, not everybody has them with ING Diba, but we'll change that over time. You'll find out why in the next couple of years. Uh, but also on the commercial banking side, there's no treasurer that wants to deal anymore with calling several people in the dealing room with another quote for their next FX deal. All of that stuff will disappear, and it will also be all truly transparent and truly real time. And the speed of us to be able to deliver these services is extremely important. Because the crux in order to be able to deliver on the digital promise is to take away hurdles. Convenience is the driving theme for all of this. You do not want to deal with all kinds of red tape or difficult steps you need to take in order to get to your products. The products need to basically come to you when you want them and when you need them. And this is where the data, the smart data, comes into play. The smart data has liabilities, of course, and that is, the, the, let's say, the dominant trend in the way it is being discussed these days in society, which is a pity because it has also huge, huge potential to make people's lives significantly easier, to be able to predict and anticipate the needs of a client, to be able to not bother them with information that they do not need or do not want, but to deliver them at the time that they want it, whatever it is that they need, whether it's a retail client or it's a company that desires to services. And that leaves us as a financial services industry in a breakthrough. Because of the speed that we see, we will not be able to, to uh, contemplate and, and, and consider the way that we have been in the past, the changes that we need to implement. I'll give you one small example before I sit down. A couple of months ago, no, it's spring last year, it's a little bit longer ago already, we finally managed to get the green light for video identification in Germany in order to open a bank account. Until that point in time, it was a relatively archaic process where you have to identify yourself in front of a, another natural person and get a stamp on a document that says that you are who you are. We managed to finally get that green light, strictly regulated, it was converted, very quickly into your video uh, identification process. Within one month after we did it, we had been preparing a long time to do this. After one month, four other banks were also offering the service. What is saving the day so far for banks in Germany is that only 10% of the customers actually using it. In the case of ING Diba, we have approximately 50,000 new clients a month. 50,000 people that used to stand in line at the post office to identify themselves. Today, they can do it in six minutes from home on their couch. Does it change something materially? Not yet. 40,000 of them are still standing in line, and only 10,000 people do it at home from their couch. And this is saving the day for the dinosaurs in my branch still today. But it's not going to be lasting very long. Personally, I do not very strongly believe 
in the aging of the population being a material break on being able to, uh, say, delay the introduction of digital services. If we do our job right, digital services, services in general in the financial services industry will be so easy to get over digital channels that even older people will not be rocking, running away from it anymore and will not be scared from it. Mind you, if we had a breakthrough model, most of our customers, the largest segment in our customer base, are between 35 and 55. They're not digital natives, and they have fully embraced our direct model. Thank you very much.